Fellas, this is definitely one of the strangest videos I've ever made, but I've done UFC fantasy matchups, I've done fantasy matchups in different time periods, I've done fantasy matchups between fighters in different weight classes, but now we're doing UFC fantasy matchups in uneven amounts of fighters. So, for example, two fighters at a lower weight class versus one fighter in a higher weight class. Um, and you can tell we're going to be doing matchups very similar to that. Definitely very strange. I never thought I'd be doing it, but I'm done with the rants. I'm done with all this rankings and stuff. I'm just doing a simple fantasy matchup with uneven amounts of fighters. Let me know your own if I missed any out or, you know, any obvious ones that I missed out. But we're going in there with the first matchup, which is going to be three Brandon Morenos versus one Sergey Pavlovich. This would be insane. Now, Usually it'll be two fighters versus one, but the fact that Moreno's a striker and he's grappling, he's not really known for his insane grappling, I feel like that'll be a bit unfair because imagine two Moreno's versus one Pavlovich on the feet, that'd probably be murder. So I've given Moreno an extra one of him. Now, obviously, Moreno's in the 125 division. That's obviously going to be more combined weight than Sergey Pavlovich. Also, you know, they can split up and everything, but Pavlovich is Pavlovich. He could just go out there and knock out one at a time. He could just sleep one Moreno, go to the other, and then finish the final one off. And like I said, Moreno's not a grappler, so I've, I really do feel like this would be a predominant striking matchup. I mean, if Pavlovich can stuff a takedown from Curtis Blades, I'm pretty certain he's going to be able to stuff a takedown from a tiny Brandon Moreno. But this would be really intriguing. Moreno could space around the octagon, just take on Sergei Pavlovich like that. Or maybe Pavlovich would just steamroll him. But I want to see this matchup. Obviously, it's never going to happen. I mean, unless UFC start doing some crazy stuff. But... I would love to see Moreno versus a Pavlovich, or even three Morenos versus a Francis Ngannou. Now, obviously, Ngannou's not in the UFC, so I didn't really include him in this video, but if Francis Ngannou was in the UFC 100% more, three Morenos versus one Ngannou, I really want to see this matchup because I feel like it would go one of two ways. It, Like I said, it would either be Moreno... They'd all gang up on Pavlovich. Maybe both of them would go for a... Well, two of them would go for a single leg and then the final one would just try and... Well, he's not going to reach his head, is he? So maybe just go for body shots. Or Pavlovich would absolutely maul the three of them and leave them unconscious and then finish them off with brutal ground and pound. This would be a really intriguing matchup. And like I said, they can all split up. So three Morenos versus one Pavlovich. And I've picked Moreno because I feel like, you know, he's a very clean boxer. I could have also picked Pantoja. I could have picked any of the other strikers in the uh, flyweight division. But I've gone with Moreno, former champion, great boxer. And I've gone with Pavlovich because, I mean, you've got to start off with Pavlovich. He's an absolute beast, even though we just got knocked out, unfortunately. But he's still a beast. So Pavlovich versus three Morenos. I want to see that. Next matchup. Two Henry Cejudos versus one John Jones. Now, I've not gone with three Henry Cejudos because I genuinely feel like that might be too much. Now, Moreno, first of all, he's one of the greatest. He's definitely in top 15 greatest of all time. He's got this Olympic wrestling background. He's a great wrestler in MMA. So I feel like when it comes to wrestlers, having more than two wrestlers, like I think if it was three Henry Cejudos versus one John Jones, it would be completely unfair. Two Henry Cejudos. Now, I think both Cejudos could honestly win this. It is John Jones, you know, it's the got greatest of all time. But if two, if just both of them go for one single leg takedown, get Jones to the floor, and it, you know they're able to control him from there. Moreno's the the Moreno's. I keep saying Moreno. The Cejudos could maul him. So if the Cejudos can maul him on the ground, that could be massive. Or we can have John Jones go for the classic knee to the jaw, knock one Cejudo out, and then the other. And you've also got to realize, as good as Cejudo is, he's never grappled someone at the level of you know John Jones. He's used to grappling 135ers, 125ers, not used to grappling people who weigh in at 270. So. Maybe Henry Cejudo's grappling credentials would get absolutely, you know, they'd just go out the window for this. But again, maybe this would be too much for Jones because Henry Cejudo, he is a good fight. He's a great grappler, in fact. Two of them as well, Then when they could split up as well, go for different angles and everything. And it would be the goat versus the goat. Two Henry Cejudo's versus one John Jones. For some reason, Cejudo's absolutely obsessed with John Jones. So obviously, they'd never fight, even if they were able to. But I really want to see this matchup, man. I'm really intrigued to see John Jones against two Henry Cejudos. Three would probably be too much. Obviously, one would just be... I mean, we can literally see that now. But two Henry Cejudos versus one John Jones. Let me know your thoughts on that matchup. I've got John Jones taking that, though. I think I really do feel like as tough as it would be, he just needs to knee one and then stuff the takedown of the other, which he'll do pretty comfortably, and then he'll maul him. Next matchup. Two Alexander Volkanovskis versus one Tom Aspinall. Now, the, the similarity between Tom Aspinall and Alexander Volkanovski is that they're extremely balanced. Tom Aspinall is one of the best grapplers in the heavyweight division, and he's also an insane striker. I mean, he just knocked out Pavlovich and Tabura back-to-back. -back. 
And then you've got Alexander Volkanovsky, who's obviously one of the best strikers in the UFC, but he's also a great grappler, as he showed against Yaya Rodriguez and Islam. So I already did this for one of my um, multi, you know, different weight class fantasy matchups. But instead, how about we get them in their natural weight? But we do we do two Volkanovskis versus one Aspinall. Now two Volkanovskis, I mean 145, 145. That means they're weighing at a combined 290 versus a 270. So they'll have like a 20 pound advantage on Aspinall, but obviously they're not both the same person. So two Volkanovskis now, again, it just goes back to the same rule. Would Aspinall be able to knock out both the Volkanovskis? Because Volkanovski, let's assume this is the Volkanovski that just fought Islam. Volkanovski's chin might not be in the right place. He might have, have a he might have a cracked chin for all we know. He might his chin might have been cracked. He might be a bit, you know, glass jaw right now. I'm not saying he is, by the way, I'm just saying theoretically. Volkanovski's jaw might not be the best it's ever been. So a guy like Aspinal, who's got the you know the power to knock out Pavlovich, if he can just go in there and land one shot against one of the Volkanovskis, I genuinely think that's it. If he just steamrolls one of them, finishes him, and then goes for the next, that could be really dangerous. Or maybe Alexander Volkanovsky's fight IQ would take over. Maybe two of them would just get hold of Aspinall and maul him because, like I said, as good as Aspinall's grappling is, he's never had to deal with two people grappling him at the same time in the octagon. So maybe the two Volkanovskis would absolutely maul him. But I've seen Aspinall grapple. I've seen him grapple in the gym with like 300 pounders. I'm pretty sure he'd be good with two tiny Volkanovskis. So I'd probably pick Aspinall to win this fight. Um, but let's, like I said, Volkanovski's fight IQ is insane. If Volkanovski, the, the Volkanovskis can use this fight IQ to win, that would be massive for them. So, um, yeah, this is a really good fantasy matchup. It, Aspinall could win on the grappling department, in the striking department. I feel like, again, for the Volkanovskis, they're going to have to use their wrestling that they've got and then ground and pound him to a finish. But getting Aspinall down would definitely be really difficult because I don't. how many times has he been taken down? Has he, has he ever been taken down in, in his UFC career? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he has. So, um, yeah. That'll be a really good matchup. Next matchup, this one, this one's really fair. One, one Ian Gary versus five Pavloviches. You know, we've got Ian Gary running his mouth, saying he wants to fight everyone, anyone. How about we give him five Pavloviches? This is fair, right? I mean, in fact, I actually think it's unfair on the Pavloviches. I think there should be more Pavloviches versus an Ian Gary. But I would pay to see Ian Gary locked in a cage with five Sergei Pavloviches. Maybe Ian Gary would be able to catch him. Who knows? No, I'm kidding. But seriously, no. It'll be a fair fight. Ian Gary, you know, the, the way he's been talking, I think he deserves to get mauled by five Pavloviches. One Pavlovich isn't enough. I think we need five of them just to go absolutely apeshit on Ian Gary. Um, and it, it has to be a five-rounder. Ian Gary gets finished in the first 20 seconds. Tell him to get up and be a man and fight again. Listen, Ian Gary, he wants to talk on the mic. Let him talk in the octagon. Make him, force him to fight five rounds. Let's take this extreme rules. Maybe we can do one Pavlovich around. We get one Pavlovich to leave everything he's got out there in the octagon in one round. Second round, next Pavlovich comes in. Or maybe we'll just get them all in the octagon at once to go in there and steamroll Ian Gary like a porno. And then we just do repeat that for five rounds. Yeah, I, I, for some reason, I feel like if this fight was to still happen, Ian Gary would find him find a way to back himself up. He'd find a way to convince a couple of the Irish people that he's going to win this fight. I mean, his best win so far, who is it? Neil Magny. I mean, are we really saying that Neil Magny is his best, his best win so far? For, to go from a Neil Magny to five Sergei Pavloviches. I mean, that's actually a step down to, that's a step down to be fair. I, I want to see this matchup. Ian Gary deserves this matchup. If not Ian Gary, I wouldn't mind seeing Marab versus five Pavloviches, but let's get Ian Gary in there. Next matchup, two Cody Garbrandt versus one Alex Pereira. Now, Cody Garbrandt's grappling isn't actually that bad. He's actually not, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say he's predominantly a grappler, but he's, he's not got terrible grappling. And obviously, Alex Pereira, he's not really been known for his grappling. He's been working with Glover Teixeira to help with his takedown defense. He did get taken down and dominated pretty much comfortably in the first round against Jan Blachowicz. He also got taken down in, against a fight with Yuri Prohaska. So maybe if two Cody Garbrandts can take him down from there, they can work on different things. One of the Cody Garbrandts can work on keeping him on the ground. The other one can focus on maybe looking for a submission or, you know, ground and pounding him. So maybe... In the grappling department, the, the Garbrandts would absolutely dominate Alex Pereira and Pereira wouldn't have any idea what to do because, again, training with Glover Teixeira would be training would be different to training with two 135ers running at you, trying to take you down at different angles and everything. But when it's on the feet, that's when the matchup really starts to become fairer again. You've got Cody Garbrandt, well, two Cody Garbrandts, the worst chin in the UFC, in my opinion, the worst chin in the UFC, Cody Garbrandt. You open a door, you open a door too fast, Cody Garbrandt might actually get knocked out. We've got the worst chin versus the hardest hitter in the light heavyweight division right now, Alex Pereira. If Pereira even just gets near to his face, if he throws a punch and it nearly lands and that gust of wind just lands on Cody Garbrandt's chin, 
is over for one of the Garbrandts. Maybe that's all Pereira has to do. Just start spinning, just start attempting to throw roundhouse kicks in hope that one of them, you know, maybe sends the strong gust of wind in a Garbrandt's way. I really want to see, see this match up. One Garbrandt obviously is getting knocked out, but I genuinely don't think the two Garbrandts would last, to be honest with you. I feel like on the feet, if you match up a guy with the worst chin against a guy with, what, well, one of the hardest hitters, or maybe that wouldn't happen because we saw with Luke Rockhold and uh, Paolo Costa. Luke Rockhold's known for his bad chin. Costa's known for his power. You know, Luke Rockhold was still able to survive, so maybe we'd see something like that. But two Garbrandts versus one Pereira. Maybe I should have done three Garbrandts just to make it more fair. But on the feet, total domination by Pereira. But again, Pereira's not known for his grappling. Maybe Garbrandt will be able to get him to the floor. We don't know. Next matchup. Conor McGregor and Islam Makachev versus Ankalaev and Sean O'Malley. It's a classic star in McGregor and a Dagestani in Islam versus a star in O'Malley and a Dagestani in um, Magomed Ankalaev. We've got two lightweights versus one bantamweight and a light heavyweight, so it kind of works out. If I had to split them up, if I had to, you know, say who goes for who, I'd say Islam would go for Ankalaev. Obviously, Ankalaev's winning that, but... I think Islam versus Ankalaev would be a lot less brutal than seeing McGregor get mauled by Ankalaev. And then McGregor can just go out there and beat Sean O'Malley. But even now, I don't even know if I trust McGregor to beat O'Malley in 2023. Maybe I'm just waffling. Maybe he'd go out there and dominate O'Malley, which he probably would, let's be honest. And then once maybe McGregor, if McGregor can put O'Malley out there and, you know, Islam's still surviving against Ankalaev, then we can get McGregor uses new you know jujitsu black belt which he got from coach uh john maybe he can use that new jujitsu black belt skill to go out there and help islam against ankalaev or maybe ankalaev will just absolutely maul islam makachev really quickly submit him put him to sleep and then help sean o'malley tackle conor mcgregor i really, I really want to see this now the, the hardest thing about this matchup isn't the fact you know picking between the two teams it's to see would mcgregor Actually, you know, would he would he be up for a team with Islam Makachev? I was originally going to do McGregor versus Habib, but I thought, you know, since I didn't include Ngannou, it's kind of unfair that I don't include... It's kind of unfair if I include Habib, who's also not in the UFC. So I've done the closest fighter to Habib in Islam. Islam and McGregor versus Ankalaev and Sean O'Malley. I really want to see this. No, I don't. I, I've said that for every matchup now, but I want to see them all. But yeah, that is my UFC fantasy matchups in uneven amounts of fighters. Let me know if I missed any out. Let me know your thoughts on this video. It was a bit of a wild video. You know, I'm just sick of ranting and stuff. So I thought, let's just do this one. Get it out of the way. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching.